Attention homeowners, your home equity is up at record high amounts. What are you gonna do with the equity? You wanna make sure that you make the right decision if you're thinking about doing a cash out refinance or a home equity line of credit. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the difference between the two and what you should be considering if you're thinking about tapping into your equity. My name is Sean Uihara. I'm a branch manager with Loan Depot, helping you finance your homes all across the country. Whether you're thinking of purchasing your first home, buying a vacation property, or building your rental portfolio, I created this channel to help you get your mortgage right. So if you ever have any questions, need more information, make sure to hit the description below for links on more information and also how to get a hold of me so we can help you and analyze your mortgage options for you. And don't forget, please share this video if you find this helpful with your friends and family so that we can help impact and help more people across the country with getting their mortgage right. Now with record equity across the board, like I mentioned, many homeowners today are thinking about ways to tap into their home equity. But most of you, that have either purchased or refinanced in the last several years, you benefited by the amazing low interest rates that we've seen. You probably have rates in the twos, low 3% range, and you really don't know what to do with your home equity. Now, I wanted to go over a couple of things as far as a home equity line of credit, some pros and cons, and as well with a cash out refinance, some pros and cons to consider so that way you can decide what's the best way to go about tapping into that equity and putting it to its best use. Now, let's start with some of the pros for HELOCs. One of the best things about a home equity line of credit or a HELOC is that you only pay on the amount that you draw on the HELOC. So think of the home equity line of credit as like a big credit card that you get to utilize. So more often than not, when you do obtain a HELOC, they're really easy to qualify for. I've gotten two over the last several years and I've literally been able to go to my credit union and I literally signed a loan application and I was able to get approved and I got my funds literally within a week's time. And if you all stay tuned within the next month or two here at Loan Depot, we're going to be actually rolling out industry's first all digital home equity line of credit. Stay tuned because we're going to be able to get these done within a week's time. And I think this is going to be a huge advantage for a lot of you that want to take advantage of your home equity in today's market. Now, the ease of the HELOC to me is a huge pro because um, like I said, I've gotten more than one and both times I've walked into the credit union and literally within a week, I was able to get the funds and your HELOC is essentially like a big credit card like I had mentioned. So they usually give you a debit card and they also give you some checks that you can write against the HELOC. So there's a lot of ways and it's really convenient to be able to access the money, which is also a bad thing because if you're not smart with how you're utilizing your funds, you can easily spend that money um, whether you're splurging on a vacation, cars, or whatever else you decide to, to blow your money on. So make sure that you do not go crazy if you take the HELOC route. And another pro, like I mentioned, you're only paying based on the amount that you draw off your HELOC. So for example, let's say you have a $100,000 home equity line of credit on your property and you went out today and you decided to buy a new car and you spent $30,000 on the car, you would only pay based on the 30,000 that you had spent on your HELOC, not the full $100,000. So in that sense, the HELOC is very convenient because even though you have access to more capital, you only need to pay based on what you draw. So in that sense, I do like that because especially if you're out there looking to invest your money into other cash flowing assets, whether it's real estate, whether it's e-commerce, whether it's YouTube, whatever it is that, that's literally paying you back every month, it's a great thing because I can draw off the line of credit. As I start generating revenue, I can pay that down. I can use it over and over again. So that's one thing that I do like to where you always have access to the money. Now, this is where a HELOC to me is very, very critical in today's market because as most of you have seen, interest rates have climbed significantly lately. Um, I think the last time I checked, we were over the 6% range for a 30 year fixed mortgage. Some of you might freak out and say, Sean, that is just way too high and I would never buy or refinance with that rate. But I can tell you a 30 year fix at 6% is still a decent rate. My first house was at 7% and even, even if you were to go back and you looked at the history of the 30 year fixed mortgage through Freddie Mac, you can see that even back in the 80s, interest rates were well over 12, 15%. People still bought houses and was able to build wealth. So even though you might think six is high, we really got spoiled over the last several years and now we are facing a little more normalcy. So why the HELOC is beneficial? 
for all of you that may have bought or refinanced in the last several years because again you may have a two to three percent or even a four percent first mortgage and you don't want to refinance to take a six percent rate today so this is where a HELOC is phenomenal because you can keep your first mortgage and take the HELOC on the second and have a payment just based on that home equity line of credit now so some of you might be asking what is a second mortgage and how do I get that so let's break it down really easily for you so your first mortgage is your primary mortgage on your property so if you purchased a home whatever you currently owe to your current lender would be your first mortgage so let's just say uh, for the sake of this video our first mortgage is two hundred thousand dollars and let's just say we bought uh, or refinanced in the last couple of years so let's just say my interest rate on that property is two point seven five percent amazing rate we don't want to touch that so this is where the home equity line of credit comes into play because we can now take a second mortgage and let's just say we're gonna take out a home equity line of credit of $100,000 on a second mortgage. And that rate is typically a variable rate, but I believe the HELOC that I currently have, my rate right now, I'll tell you is about 4%. So let's just use that for the sake of this video. And um, let's just say the payment on this is gonna be a thousand bucks just for uh, ease of math here. So now you'll have your first payment, which is your principal interest taxes insurance and then you have your second payment. So that's how a first and second mortgage would look. That's how advantageous it is to use the HELOC because we don't wanna lose the 2.75% rate that we have on our house. So we can tap the equity in, in our property, take out a second mortgage, and we can pay based on the amount that we're drawing on that $100,000. So that's how a HELOC works. That's a first and second mortgage. And another benefit of a home equity line of credit is that you can sometimes get higher LTVs or loan to values. So what a bank is gonna look at is basically what you owe on the property versus what it's worth. So let's just take our example here again. Again, we owe $200,000 on our first mortgage. Let's just say the value, let's just call it 400,000. Now, this exact scenario right here would put us at a 50% loan to value. Now, let's just say again, in our scenario, we wanted to then take out the $100,000 line of credit. So now on the first mortgage, again, we have our $200,000 loan balance currently. Second mortgage is our HELOC for 100,000, gives us a grand total of 300,000. This is what we will call a combined loan to value, so CLTV. Now we are then going to look at our value of 400K, divide the two, gives us a 75% CLTV, combined loan to value for our property. I I've seen some credit unions offer HELOCs up to 90 plus percent. So you can definitely shop around for higher loan to values. Typically on a cash out refinance, you're gonna be about 80% or so. So again, in our scenario, uh, we were able to tap the 100,000, but let's just say if you were looking at a cash out refinance and that $400,000 was your value of the home, and if you were taking 80% LTV, you would only be able to borrow the 320,000, that'd be the max loan amount that you can get on a cash out refinance. So depending on how much cash you need, depending on how fast you need it, a home equity line of credit is very beneficial in that sense. But there are some cons to the home equity line of credit. One of the cons that I can clearly remember was the banks that can just shrink your line of credit um, if the market were to shift. Now let's take you back to the 2008 crash. There were many people that had second mortgages on their properties because banks were doing first and seconds when you purchased your home and you didn't have to put a lot of money down. So many borrowers took advantage of the fact that they could put less money down. The banks would then finance 90 plus, sometimes 100% of the home purchase. And what will happen is when the market started to shift and properties were becoming worth less and less and less, banks would then shrink the line of credit. Let's just say I had clients that had an extra 50 to $100,000 that they could tap into in their home equity line of credit that the banks were literally shrinking their line of credit overnight simply because their property value was going down. So something to keep in mind is that if we do head into that type of market again, which things are starting to slow down and you're starting to see some price reductions across the country right now, um, could that potentially happen again? 
It, it probably could. So if you have access to the money, um, what a lot of my clients were doing back in the day was they would go and max out that line of credit. So that way the bank couldn't shrink it at that at any point. And they had the money sitting in a checking or savings account that of their own choice. Um, so, and they would just sit on the money. So one thing to definitely be cautious of, if you're not utilizing your line of credit, the banks could shrink that. Another con about the home equity line of credit is that it's typically a variable rate. Um, I believe there are some banks out there that do offer a fixed rate mortgage, but traditionally it is variable. So depending on your credit score, depending on where the market heads, um, your payment may not be as predictable as you'd like, but just keep in mind, you're only paying based on what you draw against the line of credit. So just depending on what you're utilizing the funds for, that's why, like I mentioned earlier in the video, it's really good if you're using the money to go and buy income producing assets. So that way, no matter what the cash flow that you're receiving just pays down the line of credit on its own. And you can keep recycling and using the line of credit to help yourself build more wealth. Another con with the line of credit is that they typically give you a certain draw period that you can keep utilizing the funds before they essentially stop the draw period. And then you have to start making the fully amortized payments back to the bank. Uh, for example, my line of credit that I have on one of my properties has a 10 year draw on it. So for the first 10 years, I can can take out as much money, pay it down and keep recycling the money as much as I'd like. But whatever I owe at that 10 year mark, when the bank decides to stop and shut off that line of credit for me, I have to start making payments based on whatever that balance is. So in theory, you'd want to be able to recycle that money as much as you can before the 10 year mark. At that point, I would either try to extend the line of credit or hopefully at that point, I owe very little to nothing. I could then pay it off or go back to the bank and maybe apply for another line of credit. Now, the good thing about that is that even though I'm reserving that line and it's essentially I'm utilizing my house as an asset, I'm not necessarily taking away from the equity in my property as long as I pay down the line of credit. Let's just say I spent the 100,000, but I did not pay any of that money back. Then yes, I've completely depleted the equity in my property. And now I need to start making payments back to the first mortgage and the second mortgage. So that's why if you take out a home equity line of credit, you have to be really smart with what you do with the equity. If not, those 10 years will go by like this. And next thing you know, you're going to have a bigger mortgage and you're going to have to look at a refinance to try and consolidate your debt, which leads me to the cash out refinance. So if you don't like the home equity line of credit because of the fact that you have two payments, you might wanna consider the cash out refinance because the cash out refinance will only give you one payment. Same thing in our scenario. Let's say you owe $200,000 on the house. You wanted $100,000 out of the property to utilize whether you're renovating or investing into another property. We can do that. We would then take the $200,000, cash out the 100,000. So when we close on the refinance, you would literally get a check or a wire from the title and escrow company of $100,000. You can use that money on whatever you wanna do. We have no say in that whatsoever. The downside to that is that once we close on the refinance, you have to start making payments on that new monthly mortgage payment. So that's why it's really critical that when you do look at a refinance, you don't just obsess about the interest rate. And for those of you that have watched my channel long enough, you know that I'm really big on strategy and this is why you should really consider options when you're looking at a refinance because in my opinion you can get very strategic on a refi that way you know what your options look like and you're not just looking at a cash out refinance just for no sense because I've had clients that have actually went to other lenders, they did a refi, and they literally called me two to three months after the fact, asking me to refinance again. And at that point, they've already tapped into their equity. They actually made, there's a few of them that have actually made bad decisions with the first lender that I was not able to correct for them. So make sure that you're looking at the right strategy and not just the interest rate, because once the deal is all said and done, there's nothing that a lender can do to go back and fix that for you. So not only on a cash or refinance, do you have one mortgage payment, you have more stability. Um, again, when we talked about the HELOC, it's a variable interest rate. So depending on where the market goes, your interest rate could go up or down. Um, obviously with the way everything's going right now, things are going up. So the chances of your interest rate going down on an adjustment is very slim at this point um, on a cash out refinance again one interest rate one mortgage payment and you're back into a stable mortgage where you don't have to guess what the payment's going to look like if you've made it this far in this video and you're finding this information helpful make sure to comment below heloc h-e-l-o-c 
to let me know that you enjoy all this content and let's hop back into the video. And the last point I wanna make about the cash out refinance, this can be a pro or con. Pro where if you do the cash out refinance, an average lender, what they will do is just throw you back into a 30 year fixed mortgage. Now, why is that a pro? It extends the life of your loan, which gives you a lower monthly payment. So for those of you that are being smart about the cash out refinance, saving the extra money that you would have had on your mortgage or paying off credit cards, cards or whatever it is can help you build up more cash flow to put you into a better position. Um, that's traditionally what many clients do on a cash out refi because they're looking for some sort of relief. The downside is you are taking your mortgage back out traditionally to a 30 year mortgage. So let's say you've been in your house for five years. Given the first five years of any mortgage, you're traditionally paying mostly interest anyway. However, you are now restarting your mortgage back to a 30 year uh, fixed rate. This is where the strategy comes into play. There are mortgage programs that are less than 30 years. You can look at a 25 year mortgage, a 20 year mortgage, a 15 year mortgage. So depending on where you are in your mortgage journey, how much of your house have you paid off? That's why the strategy is super important because that's something your lender should look at. They should at least look at the fact that if we were to maybe keep you on a 25 year or maybe take you to a 20 year mortgage, what does that payment look like versus taking you back another 30 years? That's that's why I always stress strategies are important and your lender should be able to at least show you three to four strategies every single time they go over your mortgage options with you. If not, and they're just throwing you into a 30 year fixed mortgage, you have no idea if that's the best way to go about it. So again, pro and con with the cash out refi. Yes, you can extend your mortgage payment. It typically frees up your cash flow, which to me at that point, you have to be disciplined to either save up money, pay down more debt or invest the money that's gonna produce income for you. So again, the fact that you extended your mortgage, it's not gonna hurt you. But on the converse of that is if you extend your mortgage, you don't make the right decision, you're obviously now taking out more money on your house, which means you're gonna pay more interest. So that's the name of the game. You don't wanna pay more interest. You wanna use your equity wisely to help yourself build wealth. That's the big difference between a HELOC and a cash out refi. And if you want me to do a specific analysis for your house, make sure to check the description for my email to send me your information. I'd be happy to put one together for you. And as always, share this video with your friends and family, and I'll see you on the next one.